Hey Star Warfare boys, today in this helpful video about Star Warfare, I'm going to be teaching you some great tips and tricks for getting one of your servers to thrive in Star Warfare. I'm also going to be teaching you some tips on how to make a server stay alive. And without further ado, uh, let's begin this video. So one of the first things that you must do when you want to make your own server thrive is to look at the current servers that are running. Analyze the game modes and the maps that the current servers are. Look for the most popular game modes and maps and if it feels like there's a wide variety of maps or game modes on current, try to figure out which map or game mode is the least popular. Pretty much to simply explain it, look for the least popular game mode and or map as when you want to make your server popular, servers that stand out from the others are deemed most likely to thrive in my opinion. So, let's take for an example. Today the most popular maps seem to be Air Crash and Garage and surprisingly there is only one Killhouse server on the radar today. Killhouse is the most popular PvP map and it is a bit surprising how there is only one instead of about two or three, like always. There seems to be no servers with Golden Fall, Bunker Party, Microwave, Reactor, and Ancient Vision. And now for the game modes. On the radar today, we have half team deathmatch and half free for all servers with only one all for one server on radar. The game modes are not too diverse today so it seems easy to stand out with like a capture the flag server or a catch me server. So after looking at the maps and figuring out which server you want to make, here are some extra tips for making a server. 1. When making a team deathmatch and free for all server, always make it timed based, don't make it score based. In case you don't know, you cannot make a timed server on any other game mode. Just free for all and team deathmatch. Anyway, the reason why it's best to make timed servers for team deathmatch and free for all is because 90% of those servers are all scored and barely any of them are timed. Making it timed helps a ton with standing out and thus more people will join. Also, another small tip is that if you notice that there are no Killhouse servers on radar, then make sure that you make a server with Killhouse as the map since Killhouse is the most popular and liked map and it helps more with getting players to join. Now with all the factors for choosing what kind of server I want to make, I'll go with a capture the flag with Reactor as the map. The reason for this is because there is no capture the flag servers on the radar and there is no reactor maps on radar as well, thus helping me for standing out. Also the reason I chose capture the flag as the game mode is because capture the flag seems like a game mode that many people including me like so I just won with it. And for Reactor, I feel like Microwave would have also been a good map as, in my opinion, Reactor and Microwave are relatively the same level in popularity, so I eeny meeny miny mowed those two maps and got Reactor, so I went with that as well. So now, let's actually talk about how to grow your server and make sure it becomes popular. The first and most obvious thing, you need patience and luck. Sometimes it can take a while to get someone to join and sometimes people join in like 20 seconds. But everyone knows that and I just want to get that out of the way. So the first tip that you should have when trying to grow your server is to not kill noobs early on. Let's say that you are a higher level player and someone low level like a Viper Armor player joins. What everyone would obviously do is kill that noob with your powerful weapons. Don't do this. Remember that when you have just created a server, your mindset 
should not be the game has started. Instead, your mindset should be to focus on building your server and making sure players join and stay in the server. When you obliterate noobs, what's most likely going to happen is the noob would just leave the server because it's unfair and not fun for the noob and you don't want this to happen. The thing about servers is that the more higher the amount of players are in a server, the more likely players would want to join it. Like when players are looking for servers to join, they look for servers with the most amount of players in it because the most players means the most fun. So the reason why you don't want that noob to leave your server is because that noob being in your server makes the player count in your server go up, which attracts players. You see, in making servers thrive, the beginning is always the most difficult part, when your server only has one or two people in it. Now, if you have a higher level player join your server, of course, the higher level would be killing you very easily and after a while of this, the higher level would most likely leave your server due to being sick of waiting 10 seconds for you to respond. So when you have a higher level player who has very powerful weapons and almost infinite health, don't even try to keep killing him as you would die easily and he would not find much of a challenge and get bored of your server easily with a lack of players. Instead, the best way to challenge the overpowered player is to run away from him and make him have to chase you. This would make the higher level player take more time before killing you and when you give more of a challenge like this, the higher player would be less likely to leave your server and more likely to wait out the 10 seconds when the higher level player kills you. Just keep on doing this until more players who are fair level join. Then once you get about 4 to 5 players, depending on who they are, if they are about the same level as you, then just play normally and hope for the best. If they are a bunch of noobs, don't kill them fast and at least give them a bit of a chance for the noobs to kill you. Even if there are like 5 to 6 low level players in a server, one high level player can reduce the server into one. So be careful on that. And if there are a bunch of high level players, well, the thing I was telling you about giving the higher level players a challenge does not apply when there's other high level players to kill. The higher level would kill you but instead of getting bored of waiting and leave, the higher level would have other players to focus on killing. So try your best in dealing with the high players. Eventually after doing all these tips and having enough patience, you will get a server to thrive. There's luck involved in making a server. Sometimes, if you are lucky, a lot of people can join your server and have it filled in under two minutes. Sometimes, if you are unlucky or if you are playing at 3 a.m. when nobody is playing, you can be doing all these tips and not have a single person join your server for 10 to even 30 minutes. Also, it's possible to be doing well in building your server and have one person join and mess up the server, making everyone leave. And sometimes, people can abruptly leave and after that happens, more people leave due to the server being boring with the lack amount of people. Heck, there have been times where my servers kept bouncing from two to five players and never reaching that thriving moment. Whatever your situation is, this video is meant to be a guide on increasing the likelihood of making one of your servers become a thriving one. Even with my tips, 
this does not mean that every server you make will become popular and server making truly boils down into having lots of patience and being lucky. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you will create more thriving servers in the future.